right now. Today is the day that you choose to change the rest of your life. It is time to turn your setback into the greatest comeback story ever told. And nobody is more capable than you. This is the Ranting Weight Watcher Podcast, the future number one weight loss podcast in the world. I am your host, Donato Russo. I hope you enjoy the show today. If this is your first time here and you enjoy the show, please subscribe and spread the word of the Ranting Weight Watcher podcast wherever you are and to whomever will listen. If you'd like to connect on social media or wherever else, check out my Linktree page, Linktree forward slash the Ranting Weight Watcher. Let's connect today. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 209 of the Ranting Weight Watcher podcast. If this is your first time here, I want to welcome you to the show. If you enjoy it, please consider subscribing. If the app that you're using to listen to the show allows you to write a review or rate the show, please consider writing a review and leaving a four-star or five-star rating. Doing this will promote the podcast growth by updating an algorithm, which in turn will make it easier for anyone else looking for a weight loss related podcast that is using the same app as you. One of the best things you could do to support this podcast is to literally tell anyone you know that is in the same position we are all in, trying to live a healthy life. Tell them about the show. Show them how to find it. I want to give a special thanks to all of the financial supporters of the podcast. Thank you so much for considering the Ranting Weight Watcher podcast a worthy investment of your hard-earned money. If you are interested in becoming a financial supporter of this podcast, there is a Linktree link in the description of every podcast episode. When you click it, you will be taken to a website where you will see a button that says, Become a Financial Supporter. Click that button and you will be given the options available so that you can choose from there. Well, let's not waste any more time. Let's get into this. Journey updates. I am down 0.4 this week. Total loss since January 2019 is 177.8 pounds. Total pounds remaining to get to the 200 pound milestone, 22.2 pounds. Can you believe that as I sit here recording this, it's, it's October 15th? I mean, we are not just in October. We're in the middle of October. I mean, things are changing fast here. I mean, if you live in my house, the Christmas decorations are always go- already going up. <laughs> and they're like, everyone right now is rolling their eyes and they're saying, oh my God, don't rush the holidays. Don't rush them. It's not about rushing them. It's about enjoying them as long as possible. But it's crazy, though. The middle of October. Where on earth did 2024 go? Now, everyone at some point this month is thinking, oh, my God, the holidays are coming. And you're all, some of you are okay, you know, and you're like, hey, it's just another year. And others are going, well, I, I, I don't want to lose everything I accomplished here. This time of year, right now, if healthy lifestyle in October was a sport, this would be preseason. Because the big games are coming, right? I mean, you pick your holiday, whichever one you, you do. So Thanksgiving, Christmas, uh, Hanukkah, whatever it is, doesn't really matter which. It's all coming together at the same time. That's the point, right? And the Halloween stuff, that's just preseason. And then the big games come when we hit the rest of it. And I have talked about in the years past how to handle the holidays. There are many episodes on the podcast of if you zero in on this time of year, I'm going to talk about the game plan at some point. I want you to stay tuned for the next episode of the Redemption series. 
Redemption Series Part 7 should be airing on October 25th. I, it, barring any issues technologically, we should air on October 25th. And I want you all to be prepared for the Mission Holiday Challenge. The Mission Holiday Challenge begins... November 1st. The whole challenge will be explained on the next episode of the Redemption Series, which is October 25th, that it will air. So stay tuned. This might be what gets you in gear to be able to deal with the holidays. That's all I'm going to say about the challenge. I want you to tune in next week for the explanation of the entire thing. Be warned and prepare yourself. Mission Holiday is coming. So I talk a lot about the park that I love so much. In many episodes, I've referenced that park. And I I talk about it because it has become this place of Serenity, a place of peace, a place where all of the stress of the day can just leave. It has almost become the perfect coping mechanism. There have been plenty of days where I'm ready to go out of my mind stressed with work. That when four o'clock would hit, I would already have my walking sneakers on and literally punch out from work and get my ass out the door as quickly as possible because I knew getting to that park as quickly as possible would relieve that stress. It's amazing what that park has become in my life. You're going to think I'm crazy for saying this, but do you want to know when my favorite time to walk in that park is? When it's raining. A rainy walk is my favorite walk. And a bunch of you are like, why the hell would a rainy walk be your favorite walk? You see, when I go to this park and it's sunny out, the park is filled with people. And who's, you know, playing, who's, you know, talking loudly, all these things. Cars going by to get to their parking spaces or whatever. Birthday parties going on because they have these pavilions that you can rent and have a birthday party. All kinds of things, all kinds of activity. They have baseball fields, so there are leagues that are going on that are using those baseball fields. The same thing with the soccer fields. I mean, this doesn't stop me from going there, and it doesn't stop me from relieving stress when I'm there. But a rainy walk. A rainy walk is a sense of quiet that can just not be achieved on a sunny day. And the reason it's so quiet is because the the rainfall is stopping a bunch of things from happening. No one is thinking, I'm going to go to the park today to go and run, to go play disc golf. No one is saying, okay, it's uh, game five and we got to get out there for the league. The park is empty. So when I enter the park, the only other people there are the people that work in the park. No one else is there. No one else is crazy enough to be in the park. Except me. (laughs) But that's my point. Because no one else is there, there is a level of quiet that's not otherwise able to be achieved. But even more so, when it's a, a rain happening, depending on how heavy it is, a real heavy downpour of rain even quiets the wildlife in the area. 
There are no birds chirping, no noises coming from any wildlife whatsoever. It's almost like it's not quite as much, but if you live in, in anywhere where it snows and a blizzard comes, okay, so I'm talking to all the people in the north that experience blizzards every year. When that blizzard has started and everybody has been ordered off the roads, they're in the safety in, their, in the confines of their own home. Have you ever gone outside in the middle of it and just listened? There is almost no more absolute silence. It's almost like you don't know what quiet is until you go outside in a snowstorm. Because literally, there is no sound. There's nothing to be heard except the sound of your own breathing if you're breathing. It's an absolute silence, very rarely heard. And I don't think that level of silence is achievable anywhere else on the planet except areas where it snows. I don't know what it is about weather that quiets everything down. But the rain, the heavy rain that I experience in this walk makes the park so quiet. It has become literally my favorite time to be in that park. I will be drenched from head to toe, all wet in between my socks and everything. And I'll be loving it because the park is silent and I'm alone with my own thoughts. The peace and the stress relief that comes from those kind of walks is almost immeasurable. I experienced something incredible today. You see, all of you know I got a new job. And you know that I have already started that job. And I technically am in week three of working for this department. And there was something on my calendar today. Two things, actually. The first thing was at 9.30 and it said prepare for active meeting. The second thing was 10 o'clock, hour meeting, team meeting. I was like, all right, so I didn't think anything of it. I don't know, I didn't understand what prepare for active meeting went, but I didn't question it. It's on the schedule, who might ask, right? So I happened to be on a call with a new coworker and part of my onboarding of this new department is I have to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with every single person in the department. And a lot, of, a lot of that alone has been a push in my out of my comfort zone because I tend to start new jobs and I tend to be really quiet and not say anything. And I just kind of watch everything around me to see how the dynamics work. And I tend to be very reserved in the beginnings of any new job I've ever had. I, when they first told me I had to do this, I almost felt like I, had, I, was, the, I was the kid everybody was being forced to be friends with. <laughs> I have had a few now at this point, and they have been really fun. So I was having one this morning before that meeting was scheduled. And I had mentioned that the meeting was coming up. The question was, do we need to have cameras on today? And she was looking at the schedule and she goes, no, 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 that's an active meeting. And I was like, there's that term again, active. I don't get it. What does active mean? I said to her. And she says, you go and do something active during the meeting. <laughs> so this kind of like floored me for a second. And I said, okay, wait, 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 hold on. Let me, let me lay this out in a way that I understand and you tell me if I'm right or wrong. I said, I could put my shoes on right now. 
and be ready. And when it, when it all starts, I can walk out my front door, join the meeting from my cell phone, and go for a walk. She goes, yeah, some people use their treadmills because it's cold or whatever, wherever they are. But that's essentially the idea. There's going to be a team meeting. And the point is be active during the team meeting and get out of, get out of the desk. Get away from the desk and do something. Some people walk in place. Some people get on a bike. Some people go outside. Some people get on a treadmill. I never thought, I never heard of anything like this. I mean, you see the movie, The Internship, and it was about working for Google. I forget. I, Vince Vaughn is one of the actors in the movie. And I forget the name of the other guy. But they're in the movie, and their desire is to work for Google because Google has this amazing uh, thing of what you do to be an employee there, the things that go on there. But all of a sudden, I felt like I was a Google employee <laughs> not understanding what I was being told that I was allowed to do. I thought that it was a big joke and I would be caught out on a walk and meanwhile, I should be on camera at my desk. But I said, you know what? She said it. I'm going to trust it. I put my shoes on. And I saw how long the, the meeting was scheduled for, so I challenged myself, could I get to the park, go through the park, and get back before the meeting was over? I could have gone other places that would guarantee I'm back before the meeting was over. But why not go to my favorite place? So I went. The meeting started. I was walking. I'm interacting in the meeting. And there were a bunch of other people going for a walk. There were so many things that were going on, and I could not believe that I was in a meeting. I have never enjoyed a team meeting, staff meeting, whatever you want to call it, in all of my years of having a job. Never once. I have always thought every single meeting was a waste of time. And all of these meetings that I have ever been in Mostly can be just an email. Like, here's the email. Here's everything we, need to talk, we needed to go over. Make sure you read it. <laughs> That's what it feels like. Today, at 46 years old, <laughs> I experienced the first ever team meeting I liked. <laughs> this is a very interesting team that I work with. And I, I can't wait to see what else is to come. So I went and I walked through my park. And during that meeting, I walked four miles. And I got back with about just under 10 minutes to spare. What a great use of that time. So every other Tuesday is going to be an active meeting. I think that's great. I love it. As I walk through the park, there's a sign that's hanging in the park. And there's a fall festival that's happening this coming weekend on the 19th. There's going to be hay rides. There's going to be horseback riding, all kinds of stuff. And this is Tradewinds Park. It's going to be a fun weekend. We'll probably go to that, me, my wife, and my daughter. And we'll see what it's like. Never heard of the fall fest at Tradewinds Park, but we'll see how it goes. We're going to take a break. Don't go anywhere. I now present to you the Ranting Weight Watcher Accountability Creed. If you choose this day to say this creed, you are accountable to me, the author, you are also accountable to all of those before you who have taken the creed and all of those after you who will take the creed. But most of all, you are accountable to yourself. Now recite with me the accountability creed.
Nothing can stand in my way because I choose to be unstoppable. My challenges crumble in my presence because I choose strength when I am weak. My insecurities have no power over my life because I choose confidence in the face of fear. I own every last one of my mistakes because I choose growth over mediocrity. The mirror and the scale are powerless because I move forward in spite of the result. Circumstances are not obstacles because I see solutions instead of problems. The demons of my past can no longer torment me because I choose to renew my mind daily. All things are possible as long as I believe because if God is for me, who can be against me? This is the creed I declare each day. It is about what I do, not what I say. I will learn the work that needs to be done. I will never stop, even when I've won. I will work consistently, no matter the cost. I refuse to believe that all hope is lost. I will work when I want to. I will work when I don't. I will work when they are cheering. I will work when they won't. I will work when it's easy. I will work when it's hard. The atonements that I've made are made with no regard. I will work when it's cold. I will work when it's hot. Because choices have consequences, justified or not. When I think I know it all, I will start back at one. Because regardless of what I think, the work is never done. And from this moment forward, when times are tough, I choose to believe that I am enough. And we are back. Thanks for sticking with me. Tradewinds Park does this drive through Christmas light display also. There's a, there's a type of Christmas decoration that's made out of iron, and then they strap lights to the iron, so then they can make little animated things like Santa's waving and just the lights turn on and off to make it look like he's waving. And so that's what this park becomes. It becomes this big drive through spectacle where you see all of these lights spread out throughout the entire park that I walk in on a regular basis. I realized something a couple of weeks ago as I was walking through, and it caused me to go into this really deep dive, like retro, retrospective thought. Because they have started in the park putting up the Christmas stuff because the, the display is so enormous, they need the time to set it all up, test it all out. And you, knew, you know from previous times I'm talking about the show that there are actually two halves of the park. And the first half is the half I walk to and then once I get there, there's a service road that takes you to the other half. And I've also told the story that when I first got to this park, or when it was a big deal for me to get to this park, I was scared that I didn't have enough energy or whatever to even walk to the park. And I would tell myself, no, no, we're not ready to walk there yet. We're not ready to walk that far. And then one day I just said, you know what? That's it. It's time to do this. I crossed the street and I started walking to the entrance where you can walk into the park. And then when I got there, I realized that the park that I was at was only half the park. And there was a service road to go to the other half. And then I told myself, well, you know what? You don't have it yet. You're not, you don't have what it takes to do the other half of the park. And I went for months just on one half, and I was happy. 
It, I was cool with that. Until one day I said, today's the day. Going to the other half of the park. I took the service road. I went to the other half of the park. Came around, came back. And I survived. That first time I did that. The very first time, that was a big deal to me. And I remember it very vividly because it was the end of the last holiday season. They still had the lights up. It was coming to the end of you being able to drive through and see the lights. And when I saw the lights going up this year, it all hit me all at once. It hasn't even been a year that I have been walking the full park. It feels like I've been doing this for years. But it's not been a year yet. Because when I started it, the Christmas decorations were already up. And they were about to come down. And as I walked the full park every Sunday, as I normally do, I watched the, all of the decorations get put away one by one by one until they were all gone. And now I'm watching them get put up. Isn't it amazing what a little bit of consistency achieves? I'm telling you that right now, I walk through this park every week, multiple times a week, but I do the full park once a week. I only have the day where I have enough time to do the full park once a week. But the rest of the times I walk through the park, it's just the half that I normally walk through and I go home based on time restraints. But doing it week after week after week, when I first started doing it, it was a challenge. It was a challenge. And now I do it without even thinking about it. This is something to celebrate. This is something that has nothing to do with the scale. This is something that shows you blatantly what consistency does for any weight loss journey. My walking, my activity started with what I could do right now. When I decided it was time to get active, I decided what I can do consistently, what I knew I could do. And that was 20 minutes circling my parking lot at about 5 o'clock in the morning. And it was two days a week. And from there, it built to from 20 minutes to 30 minutes, from 30 minutes to 45 minutes. And then by the time I hit the 45 minute, minute mark, I was so sick and tired of circling my parking lot, I decided to leave it. I started walking the neighborhood. I would walk the entire neighborhood. And then that was, wasn't good enough. So I started double circling the neighborhood and then triple circling the neighborhood and then quadruple circling the neighborhood. This is going way, way back to the beginning of my walking. So we're talking about August 2019. Because after I got the 50 pound charm, that's when I said it's time to get moving. So in August of 2019, I was walking in my parking lot around in circles for 20 minutes. And now on Sundays, I walk 8 to 10 miles. 
when I include the entire walk. It is amazing what consistency does. What you do every day just becomes the norm. I tell you guys, and I wonder how many of you actually absorb the length of time it will need and the amount of consistent effort it will be needed for you to accomplish the tasks that you need to accomplish. But there it is. This is over five years in the making. August of 2019 to August of 2024 would be five years. And it's still, it's still foreign to me. I'm doing this so normally now and so easily without even thinking about it. The first time I walked the whole park, I thought I was going to die. My knee was so shot when I got home. I sat on the couch for the rest of the day. But I held on to the fact that I had walked nine miles like it was gold. I did it. I did it, and that means I could do it again. And again, and again, and again. And now I don't even think about doing it. I just do it. And something like this, seeing Christmas decorations go up, forced me to realize it hasn't even been a year yet that I'm doing it. Hasn't even been a year. Out of a five and a half year journey, walking has been a part of it for five. And walking in this park, the full park, is less than a year. Consistent effort over time changes everything. It needs to be applied to everything you do. The theology that is consistent effort It applies to all of it. Not what you feel like applying it to. All of it. The tracking the food you eat. The weighing and measuring the food you eat. The amount of time and effort you put into exercise. All of it. Needs to become consistent. Over long periods of time. If what you try to do isn't sustainable. It's not worth doing. Back it up a little bit. Do something that's sustainable for a longer period of time. If I, I can't, I'm speaking to you right now. I can't pick up dumbbells that are 100 pounds each. Does that mean I shouldn't lift weights? No, it means I should go to one that I can lift consistently and work my way up to 100. But a bunch of you heard me say that I walked nine miles and you're saying, no, I can't do that. It doesn't matter that you can't do that because I couldn't either five years ago. So how long do you allow I can't to dictate the person you are? Because literally every time you say I can't, you are deciding who you are. You do it every day. God knows how many times a day. Do you say I can't? And you're deciding every time who you are. And a lot of you are able. A lot of you are able. What you really should be saying is not I can't, but I won't. I won't is what you should be using. That would be the truth. But we say I can't and we overuse the word can't over and over and over again. We say it like it means something. 
It becomes gospel because when you tell a lie often and long enough, it becomes truth. Tell a lie often enough, loud enough, long enough, it will become the truth. This works everywhere. Even if it's you talking about yourself, if it's me talking about myself, it works everywhere. So if you're in a position right now and you don't understand why things aren't going your way, maybe start to analyze yourself and think about how often am I saying I can't? Maybe, just maybe, you should start saying, how can I? Start asking how instead of demanding you can't. And in five years, maybe you won't even recognize the person you are. Imagine for a second right now what my life would be like if I allowed my opinions of myself that were rooted in all of my past failures, all of my past successes, and the opinions I perceived other people had on me whether they approved or disapproved. Imagine I allowed all of those voices to condemn me that day back in August of 2019. You see, in the end of it all, what other people think of you, if it's a bad opinion, they've already decided. It doesn't really matter. They've decided to have a bad opinion. And the people that have a good opinion, they've decided that too. And there's very little you can do to change their minds either way. But you know what the best part of that is? Their opinions of you, good or bad, is none of your business. The real problem is the opinions you have of yourself. And those opinions are rooted in two things how you feel about your past failures and how you feel about your past successes compile together to form an opinion of who you believe you are. And that is what holds you back. Because whether you succeeded in the past and you're a failure now, or whether you failed in your past and you're still failing now, none of it matters today. What you did yesterday doesn't matter today. And what you do today won't matter tomorrow. It's only you versus you. It's only get better today than I was yesterday. That's literally all that matters. So when I looked at myself on that day way back in August of 2019, if I allowed that thing to condemn me, where would I be right now? What would I be doing? Would this podcast even exist? You see, The choice to stop having an opinion of myself and simply start doing the work, that choice gave birth to everything that has happened since. And I'm telling you, there's power in choice. You can choose to be angry at yourself and that has power. You can choose to just forget it all and move on with your life. And that has power. The choice in the end is yours. I can't change your mind. The rest of the people you know in this world can't change your mind. It's you. You are the only one. You are standing in your own way. What you think of yourself and what you think other people think of you is in your way. And you need to forget it all. It's worthless anyway. They're worthless words. The only thing that matters is the work. What needs to be done today? and check every item off the list. And when you do that, 
Today is a win. Move on to tomorrow. Check every item on the list and do it again. Tomorrow's a win and the next day's a win and the day after that. And before you know it, days turn into weeks. Weeks turn into months. Months turn into years. And in five years, you don't even recognize who you are. And it all starts with a choice. And that choice is to forget everything that has happened and move forward, good or bad. It doesn't matter if it's good and you love the past, forget it, it doesn't matter today. If it's bad in the past, it doesn't matter today either. I love each and every one of you. God bless you all.